All right, so now it's time to start talking about domain names. And the first thing we need to do when we start a website is to determine what our domain name is gonna be. Now, a domain name is basically the name of your website. It's basically what people type into the address bar when they go to visit your website. It is your domain name. Now, domain names can be very, very valuable. So there's been domain names like diamonds.com, which is sold for millions of dollars. So a domain name in its sense is like a virtual property where people use that to go to your website. Now, with just a domain name alone, it's impossible to have a website because you need to have your website on hosting, which we're gonna talk about later, and I'll show you how to connect your domain name to your hosting. But first in this video, I just wanna talk about domain names in general. Now, when you go to pick a domain name, you want to try to have keywords in your domain name that you're doing your website on if possible because that goes into what's called on-page optimization which gives you credit for certain keywords which is going to help you rank in the search engines algorithms now if you can't get a keyword in your domain name or maybe it's a brand or something like that totally fine but my suggestion is if you can get a keyword in your domain name then make sure you try to do that now i'm going to do an example site here for this series and we're gonna to try to rank it for a term Landenberg SEO. Landenberg is a city I used to live in, has about 10 to 15,000 people, so it's smaller, not as much competition. But I just wanna show you this as an example to show you how we can rank, and I wanna show you the outcome and kinda of use an example to move along the way. So since I know this website is only going to be about Landenberg SEO, I can have Landenberg SEO in my domain name. Now. If I thought this site was going to be about multiple areas of SEO, I would probably just try to have SEO somewhere in my website. Maybe like gregsseosite.com or, you know, gregmseo.com, something along those lines where it's partially branded and partially has a keyword in it. Now, the keyword in the domain name doesn't do a lot for you at first, but as you'll see as we go through this series, it does a whole lot for you as you start building through the SEO process. Just be aware of that before you pick your domain name. Now, if we go over to my screen here, you'll see I have Namecheap up and their, their domain name is Namecheap.com. You can find their website by going to Namecheap.com. And this is their website here. And this is my favorite place to register domains. And this is called a domain registrar. Another popular one is GoDaddy, and there's hundreds of other ones out there. But Namecheap is my favorite because they have cheap prices, they have free privacy, and it's just really easy to manage your sites. So what I'm gonna do is start looking for domain names that I wanna register. The easiest way to do it is you can just type it in this bar if you know exactly what domain you want. You can type it in here, you do a search, you see if it's available, and then you can pick it from there. You can also do what's called beast mode. And if I click on that, you'll see you can enter multiple keywords in here. So you can check for multiple sites at once. You can choose what domain extensions you wanna use and you can take it from there. Now by domain extension, I'm talking about what's after the dot, right? So you say like namecheat.com, the extension for namecheat.com is com, right? Most websites, the extension is com but we've come into an era where there's a lot of different extensions now, right? So some of the popular ones are .ai, .org, .biz, .cc, .cloud, .club, uh, but there, and there's tons of them there. And if we scroll down this list, there's now like thousands of domain extensions. Back in the day, it used to just be mainly .com, .net, and .org. And that's mainly what I use today. I recommend when you start a website, you try to go with the .com in most situations. And for most of the things we're gonna need it for, just choose a .com and that should be the way you should go. All right, so I already know what domain I want, so I'm just gonna type it in. I'm gonna do LandenbergSEOGuy.com and we're gonna do a search. And we're gonna see that LandenbergSEOGuy.com is available for $10.28 per year. Now, this is the fee that I have to pay to register this domain for one year. So for the next year, this will be my domain name. Now, I could register it for 10 years and pay like $100, right? It's about $10 per year. But right now, I just need to register it for one year. When the year is coming close to expiring, I can go in and I can renew it for another year, and that's how it can work. So you don't have to, you don't have to renew it. You don't have to register for many years in advance if you don't want to. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to do one year. So I'm going to go ahead and add to cart. And then I'm going to go to checkout, and I'm going to confirm my order. And then I'm going to pay now. And it will now process my order. All right, so my order is now processed. As you can see, if I go to my dashboard here in Namejet, 
I have my domain right here, LandenbergSEOGuy.com. It expires on September 15th, 2024, which is exactly a year from today, which is September 15th of 2023. So that's how you register a domain. Now, what we have to do is actually go get a hosting account and connect our domain to our hosting, because without doing this, we can't have a website. A domain name is simply that, just a name. It's nothing unless you have hosting to put a website on. So in the next video, I'm gonna show you how to connect our domain name to our hosting, and I'll see you in that video.